My life has never been the same since depression. I am, I am, who I am, I am rolling. You know, me and God, we, 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 we building something. We, we outside. As you know, I always going to have my commercial break about the Queen Victoria Miller Heart Foundation. Wonderful Regina Miller perfume body oil. This oil saves lives one child at a time. Tetralogy of Fellow Heart Disease is the disease that killed my firstborn daughter. And I want to share and make sure that everyone can help me continue to keep being great, raising awareness and helping families with this oil. You can go to the website, www.bmphairsalon.com. You know, he let me back outside and it's, it's a wrap. That's why we having this. That's why Regina Miller talk show is birthed because I am, I am outside. I am telling these stories because I told God I would. He healed me. So it's like this. It's like a pill, y'all. It's like, you know, it's like a pill. God is my pill. So the more I do what I told him I do, the more he'll keep healing me. Come on, somebody. You feel me? It's like that for me and him. So I'm working and I'm working for the Lord. Sisters, I have had the Sister Circle Network since 2011. Thousands of sisters, you know, are, you know, I wouldn't say I'm their leader because they're leaders as well, but we're sisters and I am the CEO. I created this that network and and so I'm 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 tired of sitting down on my sisters. You feel me? And it's it's bigger than me. God is a healer. Come on, somebody. He will heal you. And if you think you're gonna doubt him, just look at me. I'm here. I could have been dead. I could have been sleeping in my grave. Come on, somebody. He said, no, 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 no. You got a story to tell. People are listening. My pastor, Sammy D. Simmons, told me, one of my pastors, because I had two pastors in my lifetime. That is one. He, he is still currently alive. Bishop Arby Baker Jr. of Brooklyn, New York, is deceased. But Pastor Simmons of Sumter, South Carolina, told me, um, I want to say maybe 15-ish, between 15 and 17 years ago, when God uses you, because he will, he's going to move all the stuff out your way. He said, everything, because I was actually in my pastor office for a reason, and we was having mm -hmm. this conversation, right? And so what he was saying was like, these things that we're talking about right now, and and he said, God gonna move all that out the way. Cause it was, it was just stuff that needed to be out the way. You can't, you can't work for God and you can't, you can't talk these stories and have baggage and worries and concerns. He, so what I'm saying is he moved all of that stuff. You got to move all the stuff out the way in order to heal because sounds, when you're depressed, sounds can trigger you. Words can trigger you. You know, the devil wants you to be alone when you're depressed. Now, that is something I will share with you all. The devil wants you to feel alone when you're depressed. He wants you to feel like nobody loves you. Oh, you, you, you done, you know. Don't listen to that sound. Listen to the sound that says, get up, get up, put some clothes on, wash your face, you know, put some makeup on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Listen to those sounds. God is a healer because I'm here. I'm telling my story. I'm here right now. And those of you who 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 um, are going through hurt from losing a parent, don't be silent because silence is not good. When you when it's bad enough, you holding in what you feel, but don't be silent because I'm trying to figure out why people don't talk about deaths of their parents more often. Because I'm like, why is it so quiet in that community? Because we the main ones hurting. If you can just listen to somebody or that been through something that you similarly going through or, or, or just talk it out yourself, open your mouth.
like I'm doing. I'm opening my mouth. I'm, I'm, I'm letting it all out. And it's a part of healing. Absolutely. You know, and that is to basically sum up how I am dealing with, and I say dealing with the loss of my parents because I am dealing with it. It's not over. It's not, it's not over. And so that's why I try to be, the more I try to be an advocate for my father and an advocate for my mother, and a lot of times I'll say, uh, Regina Miller, Herbert and Bertha Miller daughter, like the more I make them relevant and let people understand who I come from, then, then my parents, I, I, it, that's healing. That's healing. The legacy is still. The legacy is still going. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Because telling people about your story. Yes, because I had a phenomenal mother and a, a a phenomenal father. I am just overjoyed to just be their kid and still be alive to tell stories about them, because there's an audience for everyone. And so, if God is telling me to do this, and you know, Mother told me to do it. I'm crazy enough to see what happened. Definitely agree. But let's talk a little bit about, you know, giving people their flowers while they're alive. The second thing that I want to hit on before we get off get off of here is re- recognizing or how sad is it to see your parents love people, respect people, nurture people, take people in and to witness things such as their death not even be being respected by those that they once cared for. I was mad at a lot of people when my parents died, you know, because my my father put shoes on hundreds of my friends throughout my um, elementary, high school, middle school, year, uh, junior high school years, church members. He, my dad basically put shoes on all the choir feet, okay? And this is things that my parents did. You know what I'm saying? My mom, you know, feeding the community, hun, my grandma Ada um, and my grandma Thelma, uh, feeding the whole Decatur Street. I mean, I have seen them take care of so many people. It is ridiculous. Like all of my life. And I used to be upset uh, because I, I, I guess I was selfish because I wanted, you know, sometimes we, we, my mother would cook dinner. And she would say, well, you know, you're only going to get one serving tonight because, you know, we got seven more people coming over to eat and I'm going to feed them tonight. And I'm like, okay. And and she literally fed like 10 more people after she fed us. But to see my mother uh, only really get love from me. Come on, somebody. I just got to be honest. And she loved way more than me. It hurt. It hurt. It hurt. It hurt. It hurt. Don't name names, but if anyone sees this because you're following me and you know who you are, um, I I am unapologetic. Um, you know who you are. You could have did better uh, by my mother. You could have did better by my father. Um, and excuse me. And you, and you just could have, you know, loved more. Because one thing about my mother and father, they were an example of what love was to the community, to their family, to their church. Love. My mother was Evangelist Miller when she left the earth. She left in her will, and I'm not going to disclose amounts, but this is the type of mother I had. People trying to get money together to bury people. My mother got wills leaving money to the church. To the church. Mm-hmm. That's the kind of mother I had. And father. You understand? So I'm not going to be out here acting like I don't know who I am anymore. Depression was horrible. But depression woke the real me up. When you in a situation where it's live or die and God lets you live, how dare you take that time for granted? Absolutely. So that's 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 how I feel. I have to say, yes, it hurts. To sum up your answer, uh, I forgive. I do forgive. 
everyone. I do because I that's I had to forgive to move on. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. But when I moved on, God has allowed me the freedom to move on. Yeah. When you moved, when yeah. you decided to forgive those who that you feel when you decided to forgive those that you felt didn't do right by your parents, that allowed you to move on and move up. When people are alive, it's so easy to go day by day and with, with our everyday lives. But when someone passed that you really love, you, it opens your eyes to who was phony. It opened your eyes to who was really real. It opened your eyes to who had other intentions. It just really, death will really, like I've heard some artists say, the good ones die early. That's, you know, that's the saying, the good ones die early. But it, it's because is to wake everyone else up. Yeah. Whatever God wants his children back. That's how God comes to get his children. He comes get them and save them from this wickedness of this world. And then you, us, we left behind. We have to try to get where they're going because they done made it. In my mm -hmm. mind, that's that's the way I'm going to believe. And that's what Absolutely. I'm going to believe. And that's what works for me. But you have to come out strong. And I am just a, a witness, a living testimony that you can forgive because like you were saying, you really won't know a person until somebody die. You won't know a person until that death money, them death checks hit. Come on, somebody. Okay? Them death checks hit. People be acting like they got a million, thousand, trillion dollars with them death checks. So, and, and families are destroyed behind a dollar. That wasn't yours in the first place because somebody had to pay the, the policy for your rusty selves. Y'all <laughs> people need to stop out here in this world with this craziness. You know what I'm saying? Parents turning over in their graves, trying to leave you something for legacy and you fighting over it. Get your own stuff. Hadn't they taught you anything? I had amazing parents. I have amazing angels now. They come visit me with cardinal birds. Uh, I get three cardinal birds often that I believe it's my daughter and my parents and I will have a conversation about my daughter I have a daughter that's deceased and that's a whole nother feeling you know so God really you know he's been healing me and I, I I've dealt with a lot behind the scenes for feelings hurts and pains and and I used to uh say to one of my customers Pastor McCoy me and her came up with the uh, the slogan, uh, the silent hurts of a woman. The things you just keep inside and you don't talk about, you know, I'm going to talk about. The pain of losing a daughter is, is not the same as parents. So just imagine having to deal with all of that. And I'm still smiling and I'm still going. And, you know, I'm acting like life is just a ball of, you know, cotton candy, you know. Because I got the Lord. And hit that subscribe button. And if you are not following or a part of the Sister Circle Network on Facebook, you need to go and find that page that also is ran by Regina Miller, the host of tonight's show, which is the Regina Miller Talk Show. So